<laughs> now I'm doing two rolls. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so uh, the agenda of this talk is uh, in this talk I'll present how Hyper-V-A-B uh, in user mode can serve uh, packet processing uh, applications. So uh, I'll start with the motivation. Uh, some uh, update on the progress we've done with Ethernet uh, user space processing and the uh, status update. Um, a, a quick overview about uh, the IP over AB stack in terms of the user mode components. Uh, information about the IP over AB address resolution, which is very relevant to the updates we need to introduce for supporting the, the user mode IP over AB. Um, the related issues to the IP over B QP number, it's also related to the changes we need to introduce. Um, the new addition to the APIs and the IP over B QP uh, versus the UDQP which exists today. Um, how we suggest to do IP over B RSS, TSS, and TSO. Uh, TSO is already supported today, but we would like to introduce a change. And uh, also how we see uh, overlay networking being uh, offloaded uh, on top of IP over AB. And to conclude with a summary. <coughs> so um, why we would like to extend the IP over AB uh, user mode uh, packet processing? Um, so we've seen uh, extensions that are being done on Ethernet. We've seen that very useful customers like that and would like to see the uh, same uh, on IP over IB. Uh, with doing so on Ethernet, we've seen uh, much improvement in latency and uh, amazing uh, packet per second rate. We see them through uh, reverbs, we see them through DPDK, and we'd like to see them also on top of InfiniBand. Uh, mostly important in the, is the uh, TSS and RSS uh, and also the flow steering and we'll talk about that. Um, so in past year we've done lots of work around Ethernet, uh, lots of uh, updates to upstream, lots of uh, acceptance and we would like to focus now on uh, expanding IP over AB as well. So to follow up on the status of um, the Ethernet uh, offloads and the Ethernet work we've done in 2006, and to follow up on the presentation I gave last year and what we've uh, succeeded into pushing upstream. So we've managed to push the Ethernet user mode uh, verbs RSS uh, with the introduction of the receive work queue uh, in direction table and uh, the extension of the QP to support uh, the indirection table and setting the uh, RSS hash, the introduction of the new object of uh, IBV work queue of the type uh, RQ, so that w allowed us to implement uh, RSS with multiple receive queues, multiple work queues of type receive queue. The, uh, transmit send offload, basically doing the TCP segmentation in hardware. In terms of tunneling offload on Ethernet, uh, performing stateless offload for uh, tunneled traffic, uh, we've uh, managed to push those uh, updates to uh, kernel. We are now working to push them to user mode as well. And also to enable uh, sniffing Ethernet traffic through the flow utter sniffer parameter of the IBV create flow. And we also managed to uh, perform a change in terms of uh, getting uh, completions and new parameters in the completion by introducing a completion queue iterator where we can efficiently uh, uh, parse completions one by one and ex extract only relevant uh, fields. So data path on the processing those completions is optimized. So next would be to, uh, what would be uh, the next plan on uh, Ethernet before I uh, move on to InfiniBand? So in terms of the completion queue, we would like to allow binding uh, the CQ to a specific core. 
You can do it already today, uh, but the parameter that you pass there is a completion vector, which is not sometimes clear to which uh, CPU it's affinitized. So we would like to introduce a change so it will be easier for the developers to know how to bind a, a completion to a, a specific uh, CPU. And also uh, combine that with the uh, existing uh, NUMA optimization code or other uh, affinity argument uh, uh, accepting code. Um, also, we would like to add uh, interrupt moderation. So CQ can uh, get uh, interrupt moderation parameters. Um, as I mentioned, we need to push the tunneling stateless offload to uh, user space as well. The large receive offload support uh, introduces uh, the TCP desegmentation in hardware offload. Um, <coughs> the other thing is uh, supporting a non-privileged Ethernet QP. Uh, today, uh, only uh, a user with CapNet row permission can uh, create a row Ethernet QP. Uh, so we have several thoughts how we can eliminate that by allowing uh, the kernel to control the layer two, three, and four headers of uh, the packet that's being sent and uh, basically limit the user for, from uh, playing with packet headers as he wishes. Uh, and also that's on send, on receive, also allow controlling which receive filters the user can push into the hardware and uh, allow to him to grab only specific uh, flows that uh, is permitting, permitted for him. Okay, moving on to the IP over IB verbs and what we uh, would like to do there. I'll start with the current status. So on the right here, we see uh, the stack stru structure. It's pretty similar to this uh, figure I had uh, on the ULP uh, um, talk but I've added here the user mode stack. So similarly, we have here the a hardware that can support stateless offloads. Uh, we have the kernel stack with the ULP here and the kernel uh, RDMA services, TCP stack and the socket applications run on top of the IP over IP ULP if it's enhanced or not. And also applications can work on top of the user verbs and can implement their own user mode stack uh, TCP user mode stack on top of verbs or can use DPDK and we would like to allow them to do that over IP over IP over IB uh, as well. Um, so IP over IB uh, is a, a datagram, a mo in datagram mode is a UDQP. Uh, so what a user can do today with IP over IB uh, UDQP so it can create, of course, the UDQP type. It can uh, join, uh, basically push multicast filter to the hardware through the join request. It can do that by specifying the entire MGID. Uh, no specific uh, filters on some uh, layer, layer three or layer four header attributes. Um, and perform a send of multicast or unicast operations. Um, there are many limitations. We'll see that in the next slide and the motivation. Yes, I specified that already. So uh, quick overview or recap before I continue because uh, this is one of the challenges of uh, allowing uh, user mode IP over IB. So what is IP over IB ARP? Uh, so the IP over IB ARP is defined in an RFC. Uh, and uh, the RFC mandates what would be the hardware address, the layer two address of the IP over IB device. And the IP over IB device is basically built of the GID of the device and the QP number of the IP over IB. So it's a 20 byte versus six hardware address, um, hardware address uh, size, and it includes the GID and the QP and some reserves bit. So we have 20 bytes. And in terms of IP over IB ARP, why it is called IP over IB ARP? Because uh, it's, uh, it is similar to the Ethernet ARP, but it carries a 20 byte uh, layer two uh, uh, hardware address information instead of six. And that's why it's called an IP over IB ARP. Um, and the main thing to take from this slide is that uh, nodes 
are familiar with peer nodes by the ARP resolution. In the ARP resolution, we see the IP over IP QP number, not an arbitrary uh, application uh, UD QP number. So if one uh, wishes to talk with uh, his peer and it wasn't to use the generic uh, address resolution services of the kernel, the known QP number is the uh, kernel's net IP over IP net dev uh, QP number. <coughs> so I'll continue with the challenges. So as I specified, there's the issue with the QP number. Um, um, so if we would like to enjoy the address resolution of the kernel, we should also behave well in terms of what we uh, put on the wire. On the wire for UDQPs, we have the datagram extended transport header, the DTH. It carries the source QP number. And if we would like to use the generic address resolution of the kernel, we need to make sure we behave well and we send packets where the, send, uh, where the source uh, QP number in the DTH is the same uh, QP as the kernel QP. So we don't uh, fake uh, uh, QP numbers. Um, so uh, the suggestion here is uh, to allow on uh, create QP in the user mode to specify what would be the wire QP number. That's the create QP. On the receive path, same thing. When we would like to uh, steer specific flows out of the uh, kernel traffic into user space, because we are offloading this specific flow, if that's the case, then we need to be able to specify uh, trapping a QP number a packet that carry in their DTH, a QP number, a source QP number, that is the device, the IP over IB QP number. In terms of grabbing this QP number for the application, uh, we have this uh, spec. This is the, basically the layer two address of the underlying uh, net device that is associated with the IB device. So we can uh, extract from the hardware ad address uh, the QP number. Um, in order to do the steering, we should enable uh, pushing filters based on layer 3, layer 4 headers, but uh, the layer, la so-called layer 2 address should be the, the layer 2 address of the underlying device. And uh, the challenges would be now also to add such support of stateless offload to the Verbs API by, and also reuse the existing infrastructure that is already there. And many of that infrastructure was added uh, last year uh, to support the Ethernet st uh, stateless offload. So we would like to enjoy the same additions. Um, so how we would like to solve the QP number issue? So the proposal here is to extend the QP uh, init attribute to include an associated QP number. So we can uh, create uh, the QP and specify what is the associated QP number, which should be the uh, kernel uh, net dev QP number. Um, so whenever we send, we send a packet with uh, this associated QP number on the DTH. And if also another point is that if we are doing TSS, we are, doing, we are using multi-queues for send, since we want to be able to uh, do send processing on multiple cores, uh, we need to make sure that all the queues, all the QPs that are created uh, on each one of those cores uh, uses the same source QP number. So there wouldn't be a bizarre behavior as seen today. If you create multiple queues, you see multiple uh, QP numbers on the wire for the send operation that, uh, based on the uh, core that was sending the packet. Um, also, we would like to, whenever we are using multi-queue, we would like to have multi-queue for the receive send operation, but transport properties should be the same for all queues on the send or on the receive. Um, so, defining the association of 
uh, the, the transport portion of the QP to a port, to a partition or a state should be uh, a mutual uh, attribute of all the queues uh, that, uh, that is uh, used for the send or receive operation. Um, also, uh, the local QP number, because eventually we still create in the application, uh, in the user mode, the uh, user verbs application, we are creating a local QP. So this local, local QP is an infinite spec local QP. It has a QP number. So this QP number will be used uh, locally. It will be basically used for uh, pushing uh, local steering rules. So if we would like to push a filter, that uh, grabs a flow and scatter or send this flow to a specific QP number, locally we can specify the destination QP number as the, QP, the real uh, QP number that was uh, achieved when we created this QP. Um, on data path, uh, we need the address handle, remote picky and remote QP number uh, attributes. Uh, also, we need to support possible uh, uh, IP over IP traffic that will have uh, GRH. For multicast, it's always there. For unicast, it depends if we are using uh, GRH or not, if we need the uh, uh, routing capabilities or not. So the extensions to the verb API, uh, as I mentioned, we would like to use, to add a Q, associated QP number in the create QP. So we've added a attribute associated QP to the IBV QP init utter. Um, so whenever uh, such a parameter is being passed in create QP, we can understand that this QP will be served for a uh, IP over AB. Um, in terms of uh, checks and failure, uh, we should verify if this QP number indeed belongs to the IB device in the IBV context uh, of uh, the underlying uh, network interface that is associ associated with this device, if not fail on uh, permission. Um, if this provider does not support IP over IB uh, user mode status offload, uh, we can fail with uh, no support. Um, if the past QP number is uh, non-existent, we can uh, fail with invalid parameter. Uh, in terms of uh, multi-queue support uh, with RSS, we will uh, create the QP with init utter in direction table and uh, init utter RX hash. These already exist today for Ethernet RSS, so we are using the same mechanisms. Um, with TSS, uh, we would like to add support for a new type of the IBV work queue. We we currently support the new object of IBV work queue uh, for RSS only. This is upstream, uh, and that's why uh, the upstream type today is only IBV RQ. We would like to add um, IBV uh, send queue. We would like to support also transmit send offload, uh, modify operations, and uh, of course, a capability report. Um, in terms of the use cases, so this is a simple uh, case where we'd like to uh, grab or steer a specific flow out of the kernel to user land. So we can see here, if this is the kernel, we, we use the QP number of the kernel. It will be associated with the application UDQP. Uh, this, uh, the application UDQP will be associated with the completion queue and work completion, and this is the application that will receive the flow. And uh, the application will use the existing IBV flow spec with an addition to support an IPV, IP over IB uh, flow spec type. It will be able to push a filter to the hardware and receive this uh, specific flow based on any UDP, TCP, uh, three or five tuple uh, um, filter uh, descriptor. Um, I'm seeing that I'm short on time, so I'll try to go over the next slide uh, quickly. So in terms of RSS, uh, this is introduction. What is RSS? I will skip that. Um, the basic flow of RSS and what we would like uh, and what we do with Ethernet. So the flow with Ethernet is that we classify first and distribute after. What does it mean? Classification means that 
using the IBV create flow, we push a filter into the hardware that steers traffic uh, based on headers on, into a specific QP. And this QP will carry RSS spreading uh, attributes. So uh, once this uh, flow was classified and steered to a specific QP, then the QP that carries the RSS hash attributes will be responsible for the distribution. And uh, in the distribution, there is uh, the QP's indirection table with multiple queues. So the distribution to those queues will be based on the RSS hash of this, uh, of, which is a property of the QP. Um, okay, I explained that, so I'll skip. Um, in terms of uh, wall queue, so uh, we've already have that uh, upstream. There's the create wall queue, uh, modify wall queue, destroy, and uh, post wall queue receive. This is how we populate the wall queue with receive descriptors. Um, so uh, that is already there, and we'll be reusing that for IP over IP RSS support as well. Um, in this slide, we see the work queue states. What would be uh, uh, similar to a QP? There's the work queue and there's uh, states in the work queue in order to support uh, uh, um, uh, RTS mode that we are ready to send or receive. In this case, it's an RTR mode only because this uh, work queue is of type RQ and also a way to flush posted uh, descriptors, and that's why we carry a simplified state machine of the wall queue. This is already upstream, so there's the reset state, that's how the, QP is, the wall queue is being uh, born. We move it to ready states when we, once the wall queue is ready to receive with posted buffers, and we move to an error when we would like to flush those buffers and close the wall queue. Um, the receive wall queue indirection table is a table of wall queues, essentially. So you can have multiple wall queues. Each wall queue can be associated with its own completion queue, receive completion queue, or can share a receive completion queue with other wall queues. Uh, and this indirection table is managed by those following ver verbs. The black ones are already upstream, the create and destroy. And we will be adding also modify and uh, query uh, verbs to this indirection table in order to allow dynamic change and update of the indirection table uh, based on uh, CPU utilization and CPU load. So uh, essentially an application can perform load balancing of uh, processing stream across cores based on the actual load of those cores. Um, here we see the structures that were defined. Again, the black ones are already upstream and are supported for Ethernet RSS, uh, and we will uh, enable them on IPv4 AB as well. Um, this is the structure that illustrates how this, is, uh, this looks. So we have the kernel uh, UDQP. Uh, we take that and associate that with the application UDQP. The application UDQP carry transport uh, attributes as well as RSS uh, hash uh, attributes, how to do the distribution to the indirection table queues. Uh, this QP is associated with the indirection table, and the indirection table is an array of uh, wall queues of type receive queue. Each receive queue is associated with a completion queue. We can share completion queues. In this example, we don't. And each completion queue is uh, processed in a different uh, thread on the application that is affinitized with a specific core. This is an example of the use case and how those uh, elements are combined. Okay, in terms of uh, TSS, so we would like to introduce the new type for the wall queue, an IBVS queue. So we will have a wall queue of the size uh, of the type uh, send queue. Uh, this way we can associate multiple send queues as illustrated here, multiple send queues with a single QP. So all those send queues enjoy the same transport uh, properties and mainly the same QP number as uh, the associated QP number with the application UDQP. 
So each core can use its own send queue and its own completion uh, for doing the send. In order to do that, uh, we will also need to add an uh, IBV, post work queue send operation, so we can post on the work queue. Very similar to the IBV post work queue receive operation that is already upstream. Um, in terms of transmit send offload, this is already, uh, most of it upstream already. Today we support uh, TCP segmentation in hardware. It is supported as a property of the QP. We would like also, the next bullet here is what we would like to add. We would like to also support TSO for a send queue, uh, a work queue of type send queue. So essentially an IBV post work queue send will allow us to do a, 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 a TSO operation as well. Okay, um, to summarize, uh, ah, sorry, before to summarize, another, uh, another point is uh, the need to support overlay networks also on over IP over IP. So basically we can uh, enjoy a tunneling of ethernet packets on top of IP over IP packets. Uh, it is needed for servicing uh, um, uh, applications like uh, OVS over uh, IP over IP uh, or any other cl cloud uh, hypervisor. Um, so uh, the main goal here is also to allow stateless offload of inner headers. If we have a TCP encapsulated in VXLAN, we would like to allow uh, LSO uh, segmentation and desegmentation, LSO and LRO of the inner a packet, also uh, check some offload obviously, also perform RSS and TSS based, or RSS in this example, based on the inner header, so we can include inner header attributes in the RSS uh, hash. And now to the summary. So uh, we see uh, user verbs as a generic uh, object model that can also support uh, user space IP over IP packet processing as it does today for Ethernet. Uh, we are using uh, many of the verbs in infrastructure, the well-known objects like QP, CQ, uh, Flow, and MR, and also the new objects that are already uh, upstream, like, like a work queue and uh, a work queue in direction table. Um, um, the, uh, we would like to reuse the existing infrastructure of verbs where uh, control and data path are very uh, are implemented uh, separately. Control path can pass through the kernel and uh, enjoy kernel services and data path is optimized and can uh, communicate with the hardware directly. Uh, we need to add uh, the association of the underlying uh, uh, kernel net device UDQP with the application uh, QP, so the wire QP number for the send and receive operations will be uh, uh, the same for all IP over IP traffic coming out of the same uh, interface. Um, and uh, we would like to support all the status offload uh, that is, are there for Ethernet, also for uh, IP over IP. And uh, the nice thing about it is that we are using lots of the work that was done in the past year for IP over IP. That's it. Uh, any questions? <coughs> yeah, since you have the float steering support and stuff like that, are you, I mean, what do you, uh, you know, do you, you're using, you're going to have OVS support and things like that, or what are you going to do with it? As I mentioned, the main goal is to allow user mode stacks run on top of verbs. So you can have TCP IP stack run off top of uh, verbs or DPDK that can uh, use a polling mode driver implemented on top of verbs and expose a DPDK API and have your DPDK stack run on top. Another uh, angle is indeed to support uh, hypervisors uh, to work also on IP over IP uh, infrastructure as well, yes. Is there a limit to the number of NIC instances or, or I guess, IP over IP instances you can have in user space with this? 
Um, the theoretical answer is no, because each such uh, instance is merely creating a QP, and uh, the number of QPs we can manage is as the number of bits in the QP number, the 16 million. This is theoretical. Uh, because obviously there are some hardware constraints. There are, as you probably know, we have the internal caches, which are less uh, optimal when you have uh, when you are bloating uh, with many many uh, queues. Also, uh, each queue, each uh, such instance can have multiple queues. You can have uh, with RSS a QP that points to multiple receive queues, and in TSS multiple send queues as well. So indeed, uh, practically, uh, the performance might uh, degradate once you have too many of these, but the theoretical answer is, is that we can support many. But uh, if we compare that to TCP, also with TCP, if you have many sockets, you can degrade as well. 